And we've got some new details on the Rivian IPO. Phil LeBeau has been digging into the company's latest filing. He's got the very latest. Phil. Melissa, this is a highly anticipated IPO that's coming to market. Could happen as soon as next week. Here's what we found in the amended S1 that was just dropped within the last half hour from Rivian. Again, we've learned that the listing could happen as soon as next week. At the NASDAQ, RIVN is the ticker symbol. Pricing between $57 and $62 a share and offering up to 135 million shares. That means the valuation of anywhere between 76 and $83 billion. And oh, by the way, there's another 20 million shares that could be offered on top of that 135 million. Amazon in the S1, uh, remember, they own 20% of Rivian, they may take up to $200 million of additional shares, according to the S1. Gives you some indication of how highly anticipated uh, the Rivian IPO is. Remember, uh, uh, Amazon has ordered 100,000 delivery vans, some of which are already on the streets making deliveries uh, for Amazon. Those are electric delivery vans built in central Illinois. 100,000 have been ordered by Amazon. This is a day where we've seen a lot of momentum and enthusiasm for electric vehicles, stocks, and Tesla certainly leading the charge. Another big day for Tesla. The stock keeps moving higher. It rallied on a number of initiatives the company has announced around the world, including a 0% uh, leasing plan in China, uh, some other initiatives over in uh, Europe. Those alone should not be enough to say, hey, this stock is ready to move higher. Ah, but then our friend Adam Jonas at Morgan Stanley, he puts out a note saying, as crude oil prices continue to move higher, it makes the uh, idea of buying economical, more economical, buying an EV. He says, we anticipate the acquisition cost of the average EV should fall below the average internal combustion engine vehicle by mid to later this decade. Yet one more indication of how much enthusiasm there is for electric vehicle manufacturers as the cost continues to come down. And that's why you saw a number of shares move higher. Take a look at the chart here comparing Tesla shares and what we've seen with crude oil prices. It's interesting that you see them continuing to move higher, especially over the last couple of months. And as we mentioned, all of the EV stocks got a nice bid underneath them today, mm -hmm. moving higher. And they've been doing this over the last several days, whether it's Fisker, EVgo, that's Canoe. Uh, you've got QuantumScape in there, ChargePoint, all of them having a nice day today. Guys, back to you. And throw in the ones over in China as well. Those are strong too, Phil. It's a global phenomenon that we're watching. Thank yeah. you, Phil LeBeau, coming through that S1. Um, the, the headline that really stood out to me, uh, Karen, when looking at this and having Phil report on it, is that cornerstone investors are willing to buy more stock at the IPO price. And usually we hear about or worry about investors wanting to get out. Mm-hmm. I, it makes me think that the range is going to go higher before this gets done. Mm. So I, it's just a staggering number, though. I mean, I get the whole, you know, virtuous cycle of it, once these become more uh, economical than internal combustion engines, that's something big. But the more manufacturing is, the more efficient it is, the more charging stations there are, the less one worries about how far the range is. I mean, you can see a lot of virtuous things happening. But... How much of a virtuous cycle is already priced in here? It seems like kind of a lot. So, um, I mean, and, and good for Amazon for buying the trucks and having the position. That's an enormous score for them. But uh, it's, it's going to be too rich for me, for sure. Is it too, is too much priced in, Dan? I mean, let's, let's focus on, on Rivian, for instance instance. I mean, there's a lot we still don't know about this company, but of what we do know, it does seem that they have actual orders and that if you think about their total addressable market as every single vehicle on the road that makes deliveries, that's a lot of cars right there without even factoring in other, you know, cars like the pickup truck, et cetera, geared towards consumers. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that Amazon holding 20% of, of that company and then being their largest order to date, that video that you're looking at right there is pretty interesting, though, Mel. You just mentioned trucks and SUVs. I think that 80% of the cars sold in America last year were trucks and SUVs. That's where they're going. And then they have these enterprise customers. So I actually think it's a really interesting story. We were talking about Lucid last week. You know, really interesting, high-end 
sedan there, but they're going to be competing with the Germans. They're going to be competing, you know, uh, with the with the Model S Plaid by Tesla, that sort of thing. I just find this niche, if you will, to start out much more interesting. I think it's a nice price point. I think that uh, that truck, that that four wheel drive truck, starts at like seventy seven thousand or something. Now that is nearly double the cost of most of the average car that's sold in America. But they almost have to start out at that higher price point. That's exactly how Tesla did it. I think if they can get in there in SUVs and trucks before anyone else does. I think that could be very interesting. And then also, obviously, Ford has a 5% stake in Rivian. Um, mm -hmm. They're going to build that Lightning. Um, I just think it is an interesting story. You tell me, at $1.2 trillion for Tesla and low single-digit global market share, what should any of these be worth? It's a really tough one to figure out. Well, is Ford worth what it's trading at, Brian Kelly? Is Ford maybe the ultimate play? I mean, it's positioned in Rivian. It's yeah. positioned in its own portfolio for that transition. Right. And so I think if you if you think about valuation, you think about who has the infrastructure to do it. I think Ford is going to be a very big part of that. And, you know, Adam Jonas in his note mentioned that all of these things are going to happen in mid to late decade. I mean, think about the average hedge fund or portfolio manager. They don't know what they're going to have for dinner, let alone what's going to happen the next decade. So my guess is a lot of this is being priced in right now. That doesn't mean these things can't, things can't get out of control. Everybody wants to find the next Tesla. Rivian seems to be the next Tesla for today. But if I were a shareholder of this company, I would be selling with both hands on the IPO. Interesting. Tim, your quick thoughts. I, I, I mean, Ford trades less than 10 times earnings. I mean, it's really obvious where that money should be allocated. And, and, and obviously, stock was up 5% today, which is probably at, you know, at 75 to 80 billion, exactly the valuation of their stake in Rivian. But it's rallied also with this news. And, and, and look, the move in Tesla, um, as the whole EV space heats up, Tesla's up 46% in 11 trading sessions. So, um, yeah, where, where should you be valuing the entire sector? Um, I still think that like, the, the valuations for, for Rivian, for Tesla are, are pie in the sky, perfection, whereas GM and Ford are places you've got guys never executing better on their core business, moving very well into these areas with a lot of investment dollars. So, as you know, that's how I'm playing it.